The next 48 hours on board ABC, we aim to complete the final five big jobs on our to-do list. So let's get back on board and see if we can complete that mission. back to episode 58 when we removed our wonky Autohelm ST7000 from the helm position here and took it down below to investigate if we could fix it or not. Well the sad news was that we couldn't fix it so we had a chat with the Raymarine guy from Istanbul and for 250 euros he is supplying a pre-owned ST6001 and he's coming today to install it. So part one of this job is me emptying yet another locker and removing the old ST7000 ready for him to just pop the new one in but of course you know it's not going to be that easy boat jobs never are <sighs> that's a life raft it's bloody heavy hope I never have to use it Well, that's step one of job one completed. Now let's just hope the guy turns up. I'm always saying that one job generally leads to another on a boat, but in the case of this job behind me, it had to be done before another job could get done. The work that was done was extending the stainless steel rails on the push pit, done by our magical helper, Aiden. Originally at our helm positions, the stainless steel rails ended here where this curvature is. And this kind of comes down to about halfway across the helm seat. So if you were sat right in the middle and wanted to lean backwards, there was generally nothing there but these very small, thin and uncomfortable wire rails. So we had Aiden extend the stainless steel from here all the way across and down to here where it bolts in to the back of the helm position and then he put an extra supporting piece of stainless steel in here. This is all yet to be fully cleaned up. We haven't got round to polishing the stainless yet. That's one of the last jobs to do on the list. But as you can see, we've now got a lot of support for backrests at the helm positions, both on the starboard side and the port side. And it's just generally a lot safer as we enter and exit the boat, either for swimming or stepping off on our passerelle. And that leads us on to job number three, which Ansha's going to tell you all about. Another job to be completed in our 48 hour mission is to have some helm seats and helm seat backs made so that we can sit comfortably when we're on long passages. And we're also having some minor repairs made to the bimini that includes uh, reinforcing some of the zips. So that should be completed today, hopefully. Okay, well we're on our way to the canvas fixing guy to get our things stitched and we're hoping that if we take things up there we will possibly expediate matters. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Merhaba. So this is the fabric for our yes. seats? Oh, nice. Okay. And this? Are uh, the templates. Oh. And then it's got the fabric. Nice. Yeah. Nice colour. Yeah. And, not, and, and very... Yeah. Oh. oh, great. Oh, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. For the back. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good because it sticks out quite a lot yes. at the back. Yeah. yeah. Chop. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately when will you come to the boat? Uh, we'll be there. Afternoon, evening. So, five o'clock? Five, six. six. Okay. okay. Maximum. Okay. Maximum. Okay. okay, that's good. Okay. We'll, we'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tashikala. Good so to It's going to make a whole heap of difference, isn't it? It certainly is. It's <laughs> going to be a lot more uh, comfy. comfy sitting in those helm positions for yeah. hours on end. Yep. So for anybody that's noticed this and is wondering what's happening, it's nothing major. It's from an old injury that I did when I was in Greece last year 
and basically I want to um, just make sure that I'm doing all the right things to help it heal as quickly as possible. It's kind of a shoulder thing that never really got better. So I've been to the doctor, been to the hospital and had checks and um, just working out what treatment of any I need just to get my full strength back quickly. She's needed as crew on the boat. In fact, one of the jobs that we're planning to do may include Ansha going up the mast. Yay! <laughs> that could be interesting. It's certainly good. Well, I could store my tools in there. You could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be the Raymarine guy. Hello, Umit. ABC, yes, I saw you outside. Okay. All right, okay, bye. So, Umit has just arrived in his Raymarine vehicle. So, hopefully, we're going to move forward on getting this ST6100 installed. Looks like there's going to be more drilling of holes in the boat. Well, the good news is the Raymarine guy turned up from Istanbul and we now have a pre-loved Raymarine ST6001 autopilot. That means we are now mobile again with comfort. We did ask him while he was here if he could locate the mythical Fluxgate compass on board ABC. He said, yep, no problem. Anyway, 40 minutes after taking the boat apart inside, he couldn't find it. So the mystery continues on the Fluxgate compass, but we do have an autopilot, so that's good news. And now all we've got to do is get this lot back into the starboard locker, open up the port locker and start filling scuba tanks. That's job number four, I believe. So quite a big day for us today on board ABC. Uh, this is another one of those final 48 hour mission jobs and that is to get the compressor, the scuba tank filling compressor, um, brought up to speed. We've never used it. It's been sat on the boat for almost a year now. We haven't used it. In fact, we only filled it with oil today and I'll tell you a story about that. What a shame uh, the cameras weren't rolling. I'm glad they weren't <laughs> rolling. <laughs> so basically, uh, the tanks we had uh, that we bought from Spain, we've emptied them now almost. They've always been at 50 or 70 bar, never empty, leave an empty tank. And now it comes to the time to fill them because I need to go in the water and I need to clean the hull. So back to the point about the compressor. The compressor is a brand new Coltree compressor. Uh, I think it's a five kilowatt petrol driven Coltree compressor. And poultry very nicely, kindly send you two oils and leave a notice on the compressor saying, put the oil in first. Well, the instructions are not very clear. There's no, this is the first thing you do when you buy your compressor and you don't know all about it. There are two types of oil. This, as you can plainly see from the picture, is engine oil. This, as you probably see from the picture, is compressor oil. I made the mistake of putting engine oil in the compressor part. Once I'd realized my mistake, we then had to drain all of the fresh engine oil out of the compressor part, hang around for a good hour while it all drained out, then put the system back together and put the proper oil in the compressor, then put the engine oil in the engine. So, we have our tanks all laid down here. We have our first tank attached. We've got our air intake hose uh, attached to the boom uh, because the exhaust for the compressor is here and the wind is blowing that way, which means the exhaust fumes are going that way and fresh air is coming in at that end. Very important. So we're going to start this little beast up now and fill up our first tank. And to fuel? Oh, petrol, petrol driven. So, you know, it takes about three and a half liters of fuel. Okay. Yeah. So first things first, we've got to put our fuel on. It's in the closed position at the moment. Now it's in the open position. Here is our choke. It is fully open at the moment. 
um, and it's a warm day so I'm not going to close it in any way, you can have it half closed or fully closed so I'm going to leave it open and here is our, our throttle between our tortoise and our hare. Currently back this way it's in the tortoise position and if we open it fully this way it's in the hare position. Meaning? Well it, it runs slower engine speed revs at that this end and higher engine speed revs at this end. So I'm going to put it sort of like in the middle and see how it goes. Nearly. As the sun slowly settles down into the west, we have just had the arrival of our brand new helm seat cushions and backs, and they're just getting fitted now. They look quite good actually. The question now is, did we manage to achieve all five goals in our mission over the 48 hour period? Sadly the answer is no. We did have a rainy day in between so things got a little bit delayed. There is one more big job to do and that involves me putting on my scuba gear and going down to clean the hull before we get off on our shakedown week. So make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when that video comes out and of course if you did like this video don't forget to leave us a thumbs up. It really does help us out. Also going to take a moment here to say a big hello and thank you to our new patrons. That's Lisa and Rob who have their gullet dare to dream in Marmaris and they're coming out sailing soon. And also Diane and Jeremy. They are counting the days until they set sail. Nice to have you along guys. Welcome aboard. And before we sign off on this video, I suppose I'd better get the Admiral sign off on how comfortable these new helm positions are. Oh Admiral. Oh yes. Admiral. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do come up. Check out these new helm positions, what do you reckon? Oh, I think they're fabulous. Oh, I feel really treated. It's great. <laughs> it's got, they're really comfy. Like the, um, this backrest is, it's, re it's really wide, so it's, very firm so if we're on a sort of rough passage then we've got lots of um, support behind us and this is a really comfy seat too and they're attached with velcro so we can bring them in easily